think will shed a lot of light on why so many folks feel so exhausted. And it's a retrovirus. Mm -hmm. Teach me a little bit about why this is such a big deal. Well, this is a real game changer in our understanding of chronic fatigue syndrome. You know, for the first time, we can look at the millions of women and men with chronic fatigue syndrome and say with confidence, we know this is not all in your head. We know you don't have depression. And we know you don't have a midlife energy crisis. Right. What we do know is this is a serious, potentially debilitating neuroimmune disease mm -hmm. that has an infectious component. Just getting back to the, the, the root word that we're talking about now, it's virus. Right. Right? Retrovirus, I'll talk about in a second, but a virus is something that's contagious. Right. So is this virus contagious? Well, here's what we know, and this is one of the things that concerned me the most when I first heard about this. What we know is it does, it does not transmit via the air, mm -hmm. so like the flu. That's so a, we can I, rest assured about that. Can't cough it at you. Right. right. <laughs> but what we do know is we can detect XMRV in the white blood cells of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. So there would be a potential that this would have bloodborne transmission. So the first thing we always worried about is the blood supply being contaminated. And I, get, I just want to explain what a retrovirus is because I think that's a confusing theme. But this is an ailment that we didn't even know existed, didn't acknowledge within organized medicine until recently. So let me show you this animation because I think it'll help a lot of folks. So this is a cell. Before we run this for just keep it for a second. That's what a cell looks like. And all this funny stuff inside which looks so confusing from the outside isn't all essential uh, but the outside membrane of the cell this little part here is now play this animation forward and you're going to see this retrovirus molecule come rushing by there it is right there see that? and as it rushes by you it goes onto the membrane of the cell and when it hits the membrane of the cell uh, like a module it just smacks on and it releases viral particles through the membrane these particles come into the cell they begin to turn into a, a chain of dna this is the blueprint of the virus, but guess what it's doing? It's going into your blueprint, and that's your blueprint right there, your DNA. And look what it does. It snaps into place, and then, this is really important, it becomes like you. So this isn't just a foreign invader that comes in and does battle with you. It actually joins you. It becomes who you are. Teach me a little bit, Donica, about how someone who's watching at home might know if they actually have chronic fatigue syndrome, perhaps caused by this retrovirus. Well, most people think they're tired and they have chronic fatigue. And those are the patients who, if we sent them on a three-day vacation and gave them a babysitter, they'd feel much better. Right. But, people, but chronic <laughs> fatigue syndrome is a very specific clinical diagnosis. We don't have a blood test, but we have specific clinical criteria. The criterion you must have mm -hmm. is six months of new onset fatigue that's persistent. It's re it may be relaxing and remitting but it is not relieved by rest and it's not attributed to any other medical condition okay, so or social condition like having a baby. Yeah, so <laughs> if I'm just going to make this really straight up so people can figure out if they're in this category or not, mm -hmm. let me go over what the exact mm -hmm. symptoms look like. I'm going to put a list up here of the three big ones. Now, we got a lot more information on, on DrOz.com which will walk you through the exact criteria which you can figure out at home as well. The first thing we look for is extreme fatigue. And just to point this out, mm -hmm. if you go to sleep and you have a nice evening sleep, and you still wake up exhausted, that worries us. Mm -hmm. Second big issue is pain in the muscles, in your joints, um, in headaches, that sort of chronic pain syndrome that goes along with chronic fatigue syndrome. And, and the third is significant memory loss. We just, just don't seem to be able to put the pieces together. And patients call that brain fog. That's right. not forgetting where you put your keys, it's forgetting what the keys are for. Right. Yeah. And, and this, by the way, is a condition that we see a lot more in women than men. I mean, two to four times more commonly in women than men. So although the women are also coming to the doctors for it, they seem to also be having the problem more often. So my next guest is named Gina, and she was one of about 300 people who participated in the groundbreaking new chronic fatigue syndrome study that just came out. Here's her story. Dear Dr. Oz, I've been healthy my entire life. I'd always taken care of myself and been active in sports, including tennis, car racing, and jumping horses. But a few years ago, all of that changed. Four years ago, I began having back pain. I went to the doctor, and to my surprise, my blood pressure and heart rate were outrageously high. As the weeks went on, I developed more symptoms. My legs felt heavy, I ached all the time, and I was constantly exhausted. I got scared and began seeing a series of specialists who put me through countless tests, scans, and biopsies. Swollen lymph nodes were found between my heart and lungs, and at one point, I was actually told I had liver cancer and possibly lymphoma. At one point, I even thought I had HIV, and I was close to suicide. Earlier this year, I began to suspect that I might have chronic fatigue syndrome. I became part of a study that tested for the XMRV virus, the same virus linked to chronic fatigue. I tested positive. Now, at least I know my enemy, but it's a virus that may plague me forever. Thank you for joining us, Gina. 
you uh, share with me a little bit about what it's like to live with this ailment? Well, it's the closest thing I could describe it to is waking up in the morning with a horrible case of the flu. You, you hurt, you're tired, your throat feels horrible, and you know you're going to have to go to work, and you know you're going to have to pay your bills, and you know you're going to have to take care of everything. When a normal person, if they felt like that, they would crawl in bed and, and wait it out. I can't wait it out. You know, suffering a chronic illness is one thing, uh, but going to doctors looking for help, in your case for several years, yeah. um, and if ultimately being told that it was all in your head, something that I know is infuriating, uh, especially to women, mm -hmm. uh, something you have to endure. Yeah. What's that like? Well, it's, it's awful. It's, it's insult to injury, but it's, it's more than that. You've got somebody, you know, who you've grown up to trust, doctors, and they're sitting there telling you that, you know, not only can we not help you, but it's your fault. Yeah. And I, I went through that. In fact, one of my doctors, after some of I'd been going through some of this, told me, he warned me, he said, you know, I have to tell you that if they can't find out what's wrong with you, they will start to blame you. And in fact, that's what happened. Um, I knew I had the virus at this point. I'd been through the study. I'd been told I tested positive. I didn't know what it was. But I went to the clinic and... I asked the doctor there about it. I said, you know, I know I'm in the study. I know I'm positive for this virus. Could I have chronic fatigue? And he said, don't waste your breath. And he sent me to a shrink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're still angry about that, I, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> So did you, when you finally got the test results, mm -hmm. this, despite what happened with that yeah. doctor, yeah. Uh, did you, was there a sense of relief? Was it... Vindication. Vindication, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I had a few doctors tell me that that was crap. They said, you know, people just say chronic fatigue when they can't figure it out. And, yeah. But there's no such thing. I want this to be a real clear story for everybody out there because if you think something's wrong with you, you got to take this to heart yourself. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Donica, talk to me a little bit about the, this virus. And by the way, if I could just say something up front, that there are over 10 million people, we think, that might be infected with this retrovirus. And, and fewer than half of them are going to exhibit classic symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. So th these, this sort of atypical presentation is pretty common. That's telling us that this virus, virus is often lying dormant in us, right? Because if 5 million of us have it and aren't expressing it, the other 5 million of us have the virus and have a problem with it, there's something that seems to trigger it. So if, if we could, let's talk a tiny bit about this virus, how do you get tested for it, and then help you understand why 95% or so of patients that have uh, ailments like Gina's claim that there's some type of a viral illness that triggers it, sort of snaps them over, a fever or something of that nature. Well, a couple of things. First, the easy question about the test. It is uh, available now. People can get it online. They can order it. It gets sent to them. Their doctor has to write a prescription. They get a blood test. It gets sent off to the lab. It costs about $400, and we don't know if insurance is reimbursing for it yet. So, Dr. just to Gina's point, mm -hmm. how far do you think we are from having a medication that could actually work against mm -hmm. uh, an antiviral? Uh, like Two things. First, the good news is we do have antiviral medications on the market now because of our investment in AIDS research. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is we need CDC, NIH, drug companies, everybody who needs a research project to focus on looking at this retrovirus and developing new medications that can help. Not only for the millions of patients who are currently affected, but for the millions who will become infected in the next couple of years. And that's to our attention to tips a little bit. So first off nutrition. Mm -hmm. So what do you tell folks when they come into your office and they say, I've got no energy, I fit this criteria, uh, help me get started. There are lots of diets that are out there that are purported to help. None of them have been shown to help other than a good, healthy, balanced diet is essential. That's drinking water. Um, many patients take salt tablets, uh, drink uh, power drinks. Um, of course, patients with brain fog may benefit from nutritional supplements like omega-3 DHA, 400 milligrams a day. And then people with GI symptoms, for example, may benefit from uh, probiotics. Right, so but it's highly individual. The, the, the basic tools we try to give you to cope with bodily pro the disorders will work with chronic fatigue syndrome. Real quickly, so after nutrition, sleep is, is, is absolutely essential. Every 
with folks with, with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, it's hard to sleep normally. Uh, so there's all kinds of sleep hygiene tools uh, that we have at DrOz.com. We talked about them. It's worth paying attention to them, in particular, making sure it gets dark before you fall asleep. Uh, so you give your brain a chance to generate melatonin so it gets you there. And, and finally, you got to exercise, which I know is so difficult. You know, I mean, if, if I just... I try. Yeah, I, it's I tough. Do. But even if you're walking to the mailbox mm -hmm. slowly, every little step that you can put out there is hugely effective mm -hmm. in allowing folks to, to stay, keep the, maintain the flexibility and the muscle strength so they can keep up with this ailment. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Donica, pleasure as always. Pleasure as mine. We'll be right back. Coming up, I love songs.